you have an idea for an invention, but it's really just a small, tiny, slight change on an existing product. Can you move forward with that product? And can you patent it? Stick around, because you're going to find out. Hi everyone, I'm Alex Reed, the founder of Invent Insight, an online platform with affordable and free online courses and resources for product development and product licensing for anyone that's looking to bring his or her idea to market. In this video, we're going to review inventing and patenting improvements on existing products and we're going to do this by looking at the history of a well-known, simple product, the paper clip. It's a great example of improving existing products and how patents play into that. Now, before we get started, I want you to take a guess, just a guess, at how many patents there are on the paper clip. I think you're going to be surprised. Let's go check it out. Here's an answer that always surprises me. When I ask someone, do you have an idea? And they say, yeah, but it's really just a slight, tiny change improvement on an existing product. I say, oh, that's great, lucky you. Because what you have is an idea to improve an existing product, and that's one of the best ideas to have. I also get this question a lot. What if my idea is already patented? Can I patent something that already exists? So let's take a look at that. First thing is, I want to take a look at the definition of invent. Create or design something that has not existed before to be the originator of. But here's the example they give. He invented an improved form of the steam engine. So basically, he improved the steam engine with something that didn't exist before and that he was the originator of. So when you think of inventing, improving is a big part of invention. In looking at improving existing product examples, my favorite is a very well-known, simple, basic, staple product, the paper clip. Let's take a journey and check out a little history on the development, the invention of the paper clip, and the patenting of the paper clip. This is really interesting. We're on a site called the Early Office Museum. And I've loaded up the page on the history of the paper clip. There's a few things that I want to show you. I'll scroll down. Now, this is the first one. It was patented in 1867 to Samuel Fay. Now, what's interesting is it's described as a clip a ticket fastener to be used in lieu of a pin to fasten tickets to fine fabrics. That's what this gentleman wanted to patent. But what's really interesting is the patent noted could be used to attach a paper ticket to other pieces of paper. So that's really where the whole paper clip started. And then as you scroll down, you'll see different types of clips and the date that they were patented. And there's a little information over here on the history of that paper clip or the company or even their advertising. It's quite a long list, so I'm not going to go over every one. But the one I wanted to point out the most is the gem. Now, the gem paper clip is kind of the paper clip that we think of today. We see a lot in offices. It's used. It's standard. And this was uh, not patented. But they did do a trademark 
for the gem paper clip. So as you can see, different people are coming up with improvements on the paper clip, either by design, material, all kinds of different ways to improve the paper clip. And all these patents that were awarded. But I want to show you, here we go. This is the improved gem paper clip, and it was patented in 1903. You can see it has a little bit of a lift on the lip here. I scroll down a little further because I wanted to show you this. All right, so these are obviously three variations of the gem clip. They're slight changes. So this one was patented in uh, 1921. And it says this type of clip had many equal space perpendicular serrations on the long sides only. So you can see that right there. And then three years later, another change was patented in 1924. And it said this type of clip had fewer indentations than the Colette type clip. So you can see there. And then in 1927, there was another patent awarded, and this type of clip had many equal space perpendicular serrations all along the wire. So you can see that here. And then as we know today, we see paper clips with a light coating of rubber on them. So somebody came up with that later on down the road. But what this shows is that they're patenting a slight improvement change on an existing product. So jump on the site and check it out. I think you're going to find it really interesting. Now, let's go back to some of the questions. Can I patent something that already exists? What if my idea is already patented? I put together kind of a chart so that we can take a better look at this. And I, of course, I wanted to stay on the paper clip as being the product. So let's take a look at this. I'm coming here with my pointer. So you have Mike. Let's say Mike invented the gem. And he patented the gem product in 1997. Now Joe over here said, wow, I have a great idea to improve that gem. I'm going to coat it with this non-skid non coating. And he patents that improvement for the non-skid coating in 2015. So here's what happens. If the improved product is still protected by a patent, then Joe can't make or sell that product with his improvement. He can only patent the improvement. Now, if the gem patent expires in 2017, which it will after 20 years, it becomes public domain, which means that anyone can manufacture and sell that product because it's no longer protected by the patent. So Joe can wait two years, or better yet, he can approach Mike and say, hey, look, I've got a great idea for an improvement on your product. So they can draw up a licensing agreement. And it can go a couple different ways. Mike can license his gem to Joe so that Joe can make it with his improvement, make it and sell it with his improvement. Or... Joe can license the non-skid improvement to Mike. And that kind of is what happens a lot with inventors, or product designers or product developers or everyday folks that come up with improvements. They'll approach the Mike who has the product, is manufacturing it, has everything in the pipeline, and they'll say, hey, guess what, Mike? I have a great idea for an improvement. Maybe Joe doesn't want to get into the whole manufacturing and starting a business. He was just clever enough to come up with a great improvement on a product. But Mike 
that's an advantage to have an improvement on his product. So most likely, Mike will license that improvement from Joe. And that's what's so great about licensing improvements on existing products, because basically, really, Joe just needed to file a provisional patent application for $70, do some of his due diligence, and then also get his concept in presentation mode format, and call up Mike and say, hey, I've already started the patenting process, but here, here's my improvement. Are you interested? Now remember, when we looked at the office museum, that the gem paper clip was never patented. And even if it had been, it would have long been expired. And that's why we saw all these improvements on the gem paper clip. And once it's in the public domain, like I said, anyone can make and market the core product with the improvement. Now, before we wrap up, I want you to remember the question I asked you at the very beginning. How many patents do you think there are on the paper clip? So I loaded up Google Patents, and I just typed paper clip in there, and there's over 840 thousand results. I am so curious to know what you thought, so please comment below and put your numbers in there. So hopefully now when you have an idea and it's only a slight tiny change on an existing product that you're going to be excited. That's going to wrap it up for our video on ideas that are improvements on existing products and patents. I hope you found today's video helpful. Please comment below. We would love to hear from you. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and make sure to click the little bell to hear about any upcoming videos we post here on our Invet Insight YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.